Hell's Gate, Erzberg, Romaniacs, Sea to Sky, Roof of Africa. The best riders on the planet face off in six exotic locations around the world. Terrain that only the best can survive. Many will try, but only a handful will finish. Competing in these races is an adventure. Winning is a conquest. This is Hard Enduro. In the 2012 edition of the Tough One, Great Britain's Graham Jarvis dominated the competition to win his second race in a row here in southern England. This began an unbelievable streak of victories that saw him crown the world's best hard enduro rider at the end of the year. With the season anew, he comes to T1 with the chance to pull a hat trick and continue on his way to another world number one ranking. But it won't be easy as the first event of the year defies the meaning of the word tough. Hi, I'm Steve Island and welcome to the tough one. This is the Tough One, a hard enduro battle royale that takes place inside a massive rock quarry. The competitors will race for three straight hours on a four mile course against muddy rocky terrain, man-made obstacles and miserable English weather conditions. It's hard, it wears you down, you've got to be fit. You're riding for so long and it's gnarly to ride. It's cold, it's wet, it's damp. It's the first race of the 2013 hard enduro season and the competition promises to be fierce. I think definitely to go away with a win will put you on a massive high for the rest of the year. Many will try, but only one will be the tough one. Now, let the battle at the Nantmark Quarry begin. I'm Steve Ireland, I'm the organiser of the Tough One, run by War Events in the United Kingdom. We're at Nantmile Quarry in Shropshire. Tough One's a multi-lap, hair scramble. Rider does as many laps as he can in the time allowed, which is three hours for the pro race this year in 2013. Um, we've got cars out there, log sections, tyre sections, gnarly quarry, natural descents and ascents. It, it's tough, it's as tough as, as it's been any year before. different to all the other races, it's multiple laps, so after a few laps the riders learn the track. It's a lot more intense, you've got trying to pass other riders, so you know it's a bit more unpredictable. It's a big race this one, you know, it's the start of the year and everyone's everyone's coming out wanting to make a big impact. It's got everything, it's got your muddy climbs, your rocks, your very slippery rocks, your fast tracks, fields. The tough one is uh, the tough one, it's, it's a long, gruelling, hard lap. We've heard from our very clever weatherman that tomorrow morning there is a dust in the snow on the way and we are going to get it. A bit worrying, but also we'll add a, an extra bit of flavour to the event, I'm sure. As the race is set to begin, Mother Nature steps up and throws a curveball. Well, you can always rely on the British weather for a surprise, can't you? So this should sort the, uh, the foreigners out, I think. The start at the Tough One is truly unique and different from all other hard enduro races. Please, on the first lap, take it easy, find your lines, don't go smashing into rocks and ruining your day. It's like a Le Mans style start, so everybody stands on the line, um, barging and shuffling. You usually get um, an elbow in the face and everybody's chit-chatting early on, which is friendly, and then all of a sudden, as soon as Steve Allen steps up with his flag in hand, the mood changes. After the Le Mans start, it's Alex Wink who gets to the bikes first, followed by last year's winner, Graham Jarvis. Now begins a three-hour game of catch the leader. And the rider up front has to set the pace early because he knows the pack is right behind, hunting him down. Alex Wink may have gotten off to an early lead, but that's all about to change because the two-time champion is right behind him and gaining. 
technically the track looks a bit easier this year so it's going to make for a lot closer racing and we've got a far mile lap i think it is you know it should take about roughly about 10 minutes to get around as the riders make their first entrance into the bottom of the quarry they're completely covered in mud graham jarvis aboard his signature blue husaberg is in the lead even with the bad start, Johnny Walker donning his Red Bull helmet has moved into second place only moments behind Jarvis. As the race wears on, the muddy and wet conditions will force riders to stop and remove slippery gloves and dirty goggles. This critical time delay could mean the difference between winning or losing. We're going to be doing a lot of laps in the day, so the track's going to get really worn out. So There's going to be a lot of hill climbs and big ruts in. There's going to be fallen riders all over the place. The telling sign of any successful hard enduro race is the pedigree of talent on its roster. The list this year has just been, been stunning, you know, they are coming from Italy, France. There's some top trials riders in there as well. The Hemingways have now gone over to the, the Extreme Beta team. Paul Bolton, he's always there or thereabouts. Wayne Braybrook's back. It, it's just really exciting. Yeah, the last two years I've had a, a bit of an easy run. I'm, I'm sure this year is going to be more difficult. The riders have been training a lot harder. This year, the field is loaded with top names. Not only is the world's number one rider here, but he's joined forces with a new team. It's the Husaberg Extreme team, which of uh, Xavi Galindo, Alfredo Gomez and myself. We've all been riding Husabergs for the last few years, so it sort of made sense to bring the team together. Graham Jarvis, where to start with him is, all aspects of his ride is perfect. He is the man to beat. Uh, Johnny Walker, he's a fantastic little rider. He's, he's, going to be pushing Graham all the way. He's got so much talent, when you watch him on a bike, he's a pleasure to watch and you can see how happy he is riding, so I think he'll be, I think him and Graham will be, will be very close. Yeah, obviously it'll be a massive thing, you know, to beat Graham first race of the year, you know, so I'll, uh, I'll go out there and I'll do my best and if I beat him, I beat him, if I don't, I don't. Yeah, I think all the UK riders are going to be trying hard, impress the home crowd, so they've got like obviously Paul Bolton and Johnny Walker. Hemingways. It's a new team this year, we're with the Beta Extreme Enduro team, um, which we're super excited about. It's the first time in our, in our Extreme Enduro career since 2009 that we've got a fully supported team and a good backup. While many will be cheering on their local favourites, a first-timer could spoil the party, just like he did less than two months ago by beating Graham Jarvis at the Roof of Africa. I'm excited to see Wade Young. I mean, when I and I saw the coverage on the internet and a new name had won the Roof of Africa. I was like, wow, I hope this guy comes to our race. And within a couple of weeks, I had the email, he was coming. Yeah, it's my first time. I've only really heard about it, say, after the roof. I've been training hard and preparing for it, so hoping to do my best. Yeah, it's, it's good to have Wade Young here from South Africa. You know, it's, it's different to what he's going to be riding at home, so, you know, it'll definitely challenge him and we'll see how he does. Uh, yeah, Wade Young's riding, so it'd be nice to... Uh... He's on my, on my own terrain here, so hopefully he's going to find a bit of a shock, but he's a, he's a good rider, he's fast, so I'm sure he's going to adapt really quick and, and be somewhere near the top. This is at their home race, so it's a completely new race. As Van Jarvis is a really good rider, and so is Johnny Walker, so yeah, I'm very excited. Can't wait. Back to racing, and Graham Jarvis begins extending his gap on the field. It seems as if his recent loss at the Roof of Africa has provided some early motivation for 2013. Wearing the white helmet number eight, Paul Bolton has moved into second place as Johnny Walker makes some costly mistakes. Number nine, Wade Young may have had his wake up call in these wet conditions. He's dropped back off the pace and almost out of the top 10. And the rest of the competitors are faring no better as the quarry shows no mercy. Having worked his way into second place now, it's Paul Bolton who runs into problems. He's forced to shed his drenched gloves for some dry ones while watching Johnny Walker pass him by. Precious lost time like this is difficult to regain against this kind of a field, but Bolton knows anything can happen at the tough one. After a great start, Dan Hemingway on the new beta team runs into problems and his day is done. 
Yeah, started off fantastic, uh, third man up the hill after the, the, the sprint start and got going. And along this bottom section here where it's very stony and rocky and I thought, um, I didn't know what was going on, the, the rear tyre just felt like it was it was nothing there, it was hitting the rim all the time and when I pulled across to stop, I'd split the tyre, um, obviously earlier on, uh, on the first lap and then that caused the, the tyre to spin on the on the, on the rim and by the time we'd come back to the, to the van and put the new spare wheel in, I think I was about three laps down, two or three laps down, so, but I didn't want to stop and just call it a day because it's a new bike and a new team and, Riding is going to give me uh, you know, a bit of experience with the bike and, and the bikes perform faultless all day. These days, many of the world's best hard enduro riders come from a trials background. Meet Dan and Ben Hemingway, two brothers bred and raised on the trials circuit who now compete against each other in hard enduro. And for them, they wouldn't want it any other way. Come on everybody, welcome to my house, come on in. Uh, here on the farm's good. Um, we're free range. We can do whatever we want. You know, uh, take Dan's machines, go dig stuff, play about with bikes, cars, anything really. You know, it, it is good. We're, we're very lucky where we are. Yeah, I'm a lot, lot younger than Dan. I'm a full two years younger than Dan. He's, he's quite old, really. I'm the oldest of the two. Um, I'm now 37, 38 in February. Married. Two children, two children on the way and growing up fast. A seven year old in Harry and a four year old in George. Um, cracking little kids and following in my footsteps, hopefully. Uh, I work with my father doing uh, lawnmower repairs and fabrication. Down on the farm, I have uh, my own business. I run a small plant tire firm, so in between working, um, we do riding as well. I've been competing since I was eight years old. Um, I'm now 35, so it's so quite a long time. I did 10 years of um, the World Trial Championships. We were getting some good results, you know, we were getting good results in the European Championships, but I could see that we could go further if we had a man helping. And because we couldn't afford it, and Ben had got a couple more better results than me, I decided to take a back step off that and said to Ben, right, I'll concentrate on your riding and we'll do this as a team. And then now we've, we've started this extreme enduro which which I must say I love just as much as the, the trial. It's midway through the race. Arm pump and fatigue are severe for most of the riders. Firmly in second place now, Johnny Walker's troubles are clearly behind him. He's slowly chipping away at Jarvis's lead. Even with all of his trial skills, Ben Hemingway needs to pick up the pace. He wants to better his result from a year ago. <laughs> Wayne Braybrook with bib number two is a tough one veteran. The runner-up in 2012 can never be counted out, even if he's out of the top five. Yeah, I mean, I've been very lucky to have a great deal of success at the tough one. Every time I've ridden, I've been on the podium. It gets harder for me every year. I mean, I'm turning 43 this year, um, so clearly it gets harder. The body's just not as careful as it used to be. Uh, but my mind's still ready, and I still enjoy it, and that's what it's about. When we return, Jarvis and Walker battle it out up front as an unexpected rider starts moving up the leaderboard. Welcome back to the tough one. Graham Jarvis is still leading, but Johnny Walker is not far behind in second, while Paul Bolton, Danny McKenney, and Alfredo Gomez round out the top five. As more and more riders complete each lap, the course is getting worse and worse. Case in point, welcome to a section called Root of All Evil. It's a 60 degree ascent, but a deep rut and a massive tree root makes this hill nearly unrideable, and the fans love it. Each time one of the competitors comes through, they risk falling prey to not only the hill, but other fallen riders as well. But for the
the top guys, it isn't too bad. Their mix of trial skills make the impossible look possible. Well, almost. The sport of hard enduro comes down to three basic disciplines, mental toughness, speed, and technical skill. But why do so many great riders come from the UK? What's the secret to their success? Let's take an inside look. Transition from trials to extreme enduros is, is quite smooth really because the technical side is already there which, which is a big help in, in extreme enduro. For a trials ride it's hard to get the speed um, which takes quite a while to, to get brave enough to go fast. You don't have to look at the top, top few riders, Graham Jarvis is an ex-world trials rider. Johnny Walker, he was very good in the European Championships and a schoolboy trials rider. I crossed over from trials fairly easy. Took a bit of adapting to the speed aspect of enduros, but you can adapt a lot of the skills from, from trials. I think it gives you clutch control, throttle control, finding grip, looking for lines. It's all, it's all comes from the trials and you can adapt it to the enduro scene. You know, it's, a, it's quite an easy crossover because you've got that balance, you've got the control when you come to the rocks and the logs and that. And I, th I think it's a lot harder coming from motocross. 